Okay, I'm here with Isabel Delaurier, who's the National Manager for Let's Talk Science Outreach, and she's going to share with me an activity involving 3D printing. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me here, Isabel. Yeah, it's great to be doing some science together. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you asked me to share one of my favorite activities. Uh, this might become my favorite. It's one of the newest activities that I've been working on. Uh, recently, I got interested in 3D printing and what we could do for science education. Uh, I mean, there's so many interesting parts to it. It's a really interesting technology just to explore in itself. Uh, I'll give you an example. This is like, we call it the planetary gear. And just because of the way that 3D printers work, they're constructing an, image, an object layer by layer. So they can build stuff that we wouldn't be able to build mm -hmm. otherwise. So this was printed in one piece. And all of the little gears inside of it, like they're printed inside the oh, okay. bearing. So you couldn't like manufacture all the different parts separately and then assemble it. There's no way to take them out or to put them in. Yeah, it's really different than trying to make something from just separate pieces of plastic or metal or something like that. There's a lot of possibilities to, like this is a, a fossil from a museum in Colorado. So it's a dinosaur skull. Oh, cool. But, so they you know, scanned this and then Yeah, they scanned it. And now, like, any teacher or any volunteer can just download it, print mm. it. You can print a class set or something like that for your students to look at. Um, another thing, this is a part from one of our kits. So I'm sure as a teacher you've had the experience where you find, like, a great toy or something and you can mm. just see, <laughs> like, it's almost, you can almost make it into an experiment, but not quite. So that's what happened with this one. It was a neat little toy car that we found online um, with cups on top of it. And when you put it in front of a fan, it just turns the cup, cups and with the gears it drives the car forward. So upwind. So it's a pretty neat demo mm. and stuff, but you know, when you're teaching science, like you want to take it a step further and make it into an experiment or an inquiry. So, you know, we're able to just redesign this part and make it so that you can uh, remove, like, the rods and the cups. So we made cups of different sizes and different shapes. So now students can experiment with the length of the mm. rods and the length of the cups and all that. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, it opens the door because you can so easily redesign parts and print duplicates and all that, it opens the door to a lot of those kinds of activities. I should get a set of cups like that for my bike when I have a headline. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It would help you out. Anyway, so a lot of schools I think are getting printers for a lot of those reasons, but I started to think about like what are some ways that we can link some of the technology that um, is using printers to the curriculum and mm. do some interesting stuff. And one of the first things that I got interested in is the way that the printer head moves. So basically, um, you have a spool of plastic, it gets fed into the extruder here, it gets melted, and there's a little nozzle that's laying down this like spaghetti of plastic and building up the shape from the bottom to the top in layers. So this is done through a set of instructions that we send to the printer, it's called G-code. And basically when you open up a G-code file, you see that inside of it, it's just a set of Cartesian coordinates. Mm. Um, that usually gets done automatically by the computer, but I thought it would be a really interesting way to show it to kids mm. if we got them to write their own Cartesian coordinates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that they could get the printer to write out their initials. So that's what we're going to do today. Excellent. Yeah, so now here I'm going to write my initials on these coordinates. Okay. Okay. So now I make the coordinates, right? Yeah. So then, um, the format of a G code instruction, it always starts with G1, that means like it's going to be a, a path. 
and you put the x coordinate so like your first one would be x 105 okay in that column 105 and then y would be 101 yeah so y 101, 101. you have to um, explicitly put the x in there so x 105, okay. x 105 y 101 and then the last thing you put is always E1, okay. and that means extruding some plastic. Like one, yeah. one unit. Uh, yeah, extruder. so what it's going to do is pull in one millimeter of plastic and extrude it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we have all the coordinates entered in the printer and yep. we're ready to print it out. Yep, so I've taken your file with all the coordinates and I copied it onto a card. So let's put the card into the printer. And then I'll just say print from a card. I've made plate Michael. So right now the printer is warming up the printing bed and the extruder. So the extruder needs to get to 215 degrees Celsius. That's how hot it needs to be to properly melt the plastic. And the print bed goes to 55 degrees Celsius. So that's a good temperature for the plastic to really stick well to the surface and all that. So the first thing the printer does is it calibrates itself. So there's a little sensor, a height sensor on there. It takes height measurements at nine different spots. So it knows how high it is. And it would be able to compensate if there's a little bit of warp in the bed or anything like that. Then it will purge a, lot, a little bit of plastic just to make sure things are flowing all right and there's no clog or anything. And now it's starting to print out the nameplate. And there you go. Perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks uh, for walking me and for showing me this activity and everything else that you've uh, talked to me about. Yeah, for sure. It's been good. Thanks a lot, Michael.